They're off the post. They're off in the Classian Smart Stakes. Ring start of the inside, Mysterious Affair. From the center of the gate to Catherine of Ascot. Starting to gain ground now is Princess of Ruckus to the extreme outside. And then Branksome Hall and they head to the 7 8 pole. And Princess Ruckus on the outside and Mysterious Affair on the inside. They scrap over the early lead. Catherine of Ascot is third and Ring Star is settled into fourth. The opening quarter in 23 and 1. Branksome Hall is now fifth, four lengths off the lead. Toward the rail is a Bristol Pistol. Nymphenburg is on the extreme outside. Between horses Miss a Bambi Bell, and then we have Speed River. Speed River is back about eight and a half lengths off the lead of Princess Ruckus as they move along the back stretch. Princess Ruckus leads it by a half a length through an opening half mile in 47 and 1. Mysterious Affair tracks to the inside second. Catherine of Ascot is third, two lengths off the lead, then Branksome Hall. Nymphenburg is to the outside of Branksome Hall and starts to put in a bit of a run. Ringstar begins to weaken. Speed River moves within five lengths of the lead. And through on the inside, here comes Mysterious Affair to take on Princess Ruckus. Catherine of Ascot is making a move, and they come to the quarter pole. Catherine of Ascot emerges with a short lead. Nymphenburg just off her flank in second. Speed River is third. Mysterious Affair to the inside, fourth. It is Catherine of Ascot as they come to the final for Long. Nymphenburg on the outside, second, Speed River, third, Mysterious Affair is fourth, and they come to the 16th pole now, and it's Catherine of Ascot, one final push from Speed River on the far outside, but Catherine of Ascot and Constant Montpellier that win the Classian Smart, Speed River second, and Nymphenburg third. Being led into the winner's enclosure in the infield, the winner of the Classian Smart Stakes, number six, Catherine of Ascot. Catherine of Ascot, a chestnut filly four years old by Ascot Knight from Avons by Briardic. Bred and owned by Terror Racing Stable, trained by Reed Baker. Winning jockey, Constant Bumpelier. Number eight, Speed River was second, and nine, Nymphenburg was third. Well, an upset winner of the Classy and Smart Stakes, Catherine of Ascot, at odds of 9-1 to one to kick off the late Daily Double. I'm joined now with the winning connections. Reed Baker to my right, Constant Montpellier to my left. Well, Con, this horse doesn't need to be on the front end. No, uh, not necessarily. I think as long as she um, she's comfortable where she sits. Today we had like two horses coming from sprints, and obviously they had to pretty much be on the front end. So she was sitting out there and comfortable, so she just fired when it was time to do it. 
Let's take a look at the stretch drive right now as we pick them up at the top of the lane, and it looks like you have all kinds of horse underneath you. It's just a question of is anybody else coming? Frank Waters' horse was coming on the outside, but uh, she looks pretty good here. Did she feel good? She felt great, actually. I hit her a couple of times, and she actually didn't quite like this. She switched <laughs> her lead, and she came back on her right again. I hit her. She switched again, so I kind of went to the shoulder instead, but uh, I thought I was home. When you took a look at the race uh, maybe a couple of days ago and you saw that there was so much speed in here, were you at all concerned that uh, you would get caught in the speed door? Or was this a game plan all along just to sit back and see how things unfolded? Well, no, Reed just said, uh, you know, just go as it, um, when the doors open, it's up to you. And uh, when the, those two horses went for it, we just I just sat behind those and kept her out there. The, um, I think if, if she gets to the lead and then if she's pressured, then uh, she kind of, you know, kind of uh, get a little tired. But she was really comfortable, so she just kicked in. You know? It sure makes riding the cold very worthwhile, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Constant, congratulations, and uh, really enjoy this victory, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you. Jockey Constant Montpellier, who uh, goes home on a big note, says he does not have a ride in race number nine. I'm now with Trina Reed Baker, and this must be extra rewarding for a couple of reasons. First of all, last year she had some problems in this race and uh, did not finish the race. And also, we were talking before the race, and you said Jeff and Jason didn't talk about the horse, so that must be extra rewarding as well. <laughs> well, it's nice, but I mean, I really was worried myself when all the speed showed up, but she got the middle of the racetrack, so the speed was on the inside of her, and he rode her extremely well tonight. I don't know why we took the blinkers off her to work her, and she worked slow. Maybe that was part of the thing, but I couldn't tell you. I tried to get her to do this for two years, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. At the top of the stretch, it looked like she had so much horse. Were you pleased how she was going at the top of the lane? At the 5'8 pole, she looked like... You know, she'd never run that way. She'd always been running hard and running into the bit. Anybody came near, she'd grab a hold of the bit and take off. And she was just cruising out there tonight. And I couldn't see anybody that was running as easy as she was. Were you surprised at how well she ran off the lead? Yeah, I was a little bit. But she did that the other morning when we worked her, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just maturity. I don't know. Well, Reed, congratulations. Enjoy the victory, and uh, hopefully this is a sign of many more to come for the rest of the year. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Trying to read Baker. A big, big victory indeed for Catherine of Ascot. She didn't finish in this race last year. She finishes on the top of the podium in 2000.